welcome back to Bunter's Yard for our two part. We're going to build uh, this um, table kitmaster interfrigo um, wagon, refrigerated van. And this is the first one that I've done of these. So I'm um, just going to pretty much do this sort of straight from the instructions. Not going to get too clever with this one. I've got a couple, so I might. Um, I might play around with the next one, but this one will be fairly straightforward. So, uh, nice, um, nice metal wheels. So it's good to see that. Pop them out of the way. Have a good look through the kit. So there's not that too many bits. There's obviously the the, the bits of the body, uh, you know, the sides of the roof and so on. Bit of a chassis. Let's just lay them out quickly. Um, one of the one of the ends. Um, Little quite sharp moulding, so uh, looks like it's going to be quite quite nice. There's a few little bits there. Some of the bits are over uh, over scale, I think. Um, seems to be part of the coupling's missing. Let's have a little dig around for that. Might be in the bag or something. Um, yeah, so we've got these. These are little little bit um, sort of ladders, a little bit over scale, but they'll be okay. I'm sure we'll. Uh, We'll use them for now, maybe next time we'll, we might make something smaller, I don't know. Where's that other bit gone? Let's, uh, let's have a look. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Right, okay. Let's, uh, let's crack on. So, uh, just uh, as I say, straight from the instructions, so it says we're going to put this uh, this rail on first. Yeah, it just needs a little tiny bit of tidying. It's uh, just where we cut it off the sprue. So we're just going to file that down. Um, or you can use a sharp blade if you're particularly careful and not accident prone like myself. And that just clips into place. Um, there's a couple of uh, sort of lugs. You can see where the cross, where the ribs are. And um, just kind of clips into place there. You can't get it wrong. Well, I did the first time, but anyway. You, you can't get it wrong. Trust me, it's uh, it's really straightforward, and they fit in. the uh, The floor of the wagon's very slightly bowed, so it just needs a bit of pressure while the glue sets. So once you've glued that into place, um, the next thing it tells us to do is to start to add the brake shoes. Just going to oh well, there we go. Got it. Uh, one at each end. And these just glue into place. Um, there's again, there's this little space on there, so it's difficult to get wrong. Let's just glue that rail in. And then they just pop into there. Now this is a liquid poly adhesive, so it kind of melts the plastic ever so slightly, and um, it welds them together. Um, and it's good for um, if you working on the sort of underside of the the rear of the model, it will um, capillary action will make it flow in between the joins as well. So uh, it's quite good, and it's. Um, it can get messy, just be careful, don't use too much because it, it will just sort of flow all over, then you get stuck in fingerprints. I've got a few on this, but we've uh, got rid of them since, so that's okay. So there's our four brake shoes, and that's the very, very outer ones. Then uh, the instructions just put the wheels in, which is probably a good idea. Um, it just helps get the spacing for the, uh, the brake shoes while they set into place, so you just know where they uh, when they need to go. So there's the wheels, and it's quite free running. So I was quite, um, yeah, quite happy with that the fact that the, uh, the wagon sort of rolled along without the need of having any sort of brass bearings in. That wheel was not straight. That's, uh, that it does fit. I've just not put it in properly there. So while they're still um, before they set, we can just adjust the brake shoes to make them look like they're in the correct place. And we'll just pop it aside. 
um, while that dries. Next part is this brake cylinder, which has got um, lots and lots of flash on it. So we need to clean that off in whichever way you want. Um, I'll use the craft knife and try and keep all my digits intact. But it's just a matter of scraping as much of that flash off. It comes off fairly easily anyway. Now this is going to go right underneath the wagon, so we're really not going to see this anyway. But um, you know, if we're going to do it, we might as well do it properly, I guess. So while we're uh, while we're fiddling with this bit, this is um, I say one of the Daypole kits. This is a C042, if you're at all interested. Um, we're going to get a few on the website. I think we've got one spare. Uh, I might put that on the website. Um, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I might might carry some of these on uh, on the website and on eBay. So uh, we'll see how popular they, they are. Anyway, so here's this uh, brake cylinder thing. And it just kind of clips into there. Nice and tight. Push it in, that's it. And then uh, a dab of glue, and then we're away. That's it. And just a little touch of the, uh, the liquid poly. So now we come to the sort of bigger bits. This is assembling the uh, the sides. So this side first. Now there's a little uh, a little lug on each side, a little sort of space you can just see, um, and that's where the brake wheel goes. So you uh, it's, it's quite obvious which way it goes around, I think. So there's a little slot which matches on the uh, the floor of the wagon as well. And then again, the uh, the ends clip into place, uh, and they've got these little keyways. So uh, again, it's it's not possible to get them back to front. They just wouldn't fit if you got them on the wrong end. They are very slightly different. So pop them into place. Little bit of uh, liquid poly. And then we can pop the roof on. Now the roof's got a chunk out of it where it's um it was on it wasn't on a sprue when we got it, but it's uh it, it's obviously come off a sprue at some point and it's been torn off and it's got a gap, so we'll we'll, we'll feel that. And just so I this sets to give us a bit of a um a bit of a head start, we'll uh, we'll just tape it all together, keep it all nice and square and keep the joins joint. Now there's a few little gaps, and I just want to fill those. These are probably would fill with, um, you know, a thick layer of paint, so it's probably not the end of the world. But um, I thought we'd give this uh, give this some filler just just to get rid of some of the bigger gaps. And this is um, just a filler from a, a tube, and uh, it's a Vallejo, I think, this particular uh, the particular one. And we're just putting in with the uh, with the craft knife, palette knife thing. Just pop it into the air, push it into the gaps, and then while it's still wet, I'm just going to rub it back. And that's as much as I want to do with that particular little bit. some of the gaps are a little bit bigger so we're gonna have to put uh, just a touch more of this filler in there and wait for it to go off and then we can flat it back 
it's always worth sort of being uh, being careful at this point and cleaning up as much as you can. Uh, it's easier to take off now than it is once it's dry. Although this uh, this particular filly, you can scrape uh, with a blade and get a lot of it off anyway. Uh, so we'll just flat some of it back, and some of the uh, the higher bits we can take off with the with the uh, with a sharp scalpel. I'm just using the Tamiya sponge. That's a 600 grit, I think, that particular one. Um, and that just uh, just takes the worst of it off. So our next stage, according to the instructions, is to get these uh, these platforms on. So this is where the uh, the steps are either end. And these again, I've got a bit of flash on them, so it just needs a bit of a uh, bit of careful scraping with the blade. Or you could use um, uh, a, like a small flat file. There's bits of flash on all of these things. Now these um, definitely the ladders uh, are a little bit sort of. Um, out of scale they're just a bit heavy for this particular um, size I think but uh, for this uh, for this particular build we're just going to do it straight from the bag so pretty much just as it is and it just needs a little bit more tidying up um, if you've got lots of time on your hands I suppose like a lot of people do with uh, stairs on the steps on their class 8s and so on they just uh, scrape it back until they get thinner and thinner and then they become sort of almost in scale um, so that's an option maybe for our next um, our next build so our step just pops into those uh, two top holes and if you look on the underside of the step it's got these ejector marks so um, they only it will fit either way but ideally you'd want to put that with the ejector marks facing down you just hear that pin mark there pop that into place the steps go on um, just make sure they're orientated the right way so they will have that little dip in it from the front that will flare out as they go up and that's how that looks and then on one end you've got this um, junction box which uh, just pops into place there and then we got to the buffer beams so they're uh, our next they're both the same on either end it depends on um, what couplings you're going to use you may need to modify these you can see there's two little um, sort of drop bars towards the center and if you're using um, one or two of the coupling options you need to just nip them off if you're going to use the um, three chain link we can leave them on and that's what we're going to do so they just pop into place there and then a bit of uh, a bit of liquid poly from behind and once that's set that will be as good as gold now we've got choice of uh, coupling so we've got these particular ones um, and you've also got these uh, tension locks and all the bits that go with it. Um, look, I'll save them for another project. But um, we're just going to have this probably sitting in the siding. So we'll use these um, three chain links. Now it's unfortunate because uh, I haven't got any of the good ones like the Acura scale ones. Uh, I used my last two on something else a couple of days ago and I forgot to get any more. So unfortunately you can use these uh, on this particular one which is a shame because they're a little bit, um, what's the word, yeah you know the word, anyway that's what they are, they're a little bit clunky aren't they, but I'm sure, I'm sure with a bit of rust uh, they'll, they'll be okay, we'll, we'll, um, we'll go with it for this particular one, now, this does fit and they are quite a tight fit. Um, try uh, one more time some things it's just easier with uh, with your fingers there we go 
always looks very nice when you use a pair of tweezers very professional but um it's not always as easy as it, as it would uh as it needs to be so we'll glue that in from the back as well so there's no glue showing now so the buffers um i've got these from mercura scale i've got quite a few of these which i bought for something else and i've got around to using them um you know and they're they're, this, they're spring loaded uh, i just thought they look nice uh, they're quite a sort of sharp obviously um detail so we'll use those just uh it's a shame we haven't got the, the chain links to go with it as well. So we need to change the size of the hole. Um, it's just a bit too small, so it needs to be a two mil hole rather than the one and a half that's on there. And then we're just gonna drop them in and super glue them before uh, we pop them in. Not too much super glue, otherwise um, the, the spring will uh, will not work if that's what you want it to do. This is just going to sit in the siding, so it's not really uh, that important, I guess. And then just need to make sure they're orientated around the right side. There's a little sort of flange, uh, which should go from side to side, just to make, make sure they're straight. So these side steps took me a little uh, a few minutes to think about this and how that was going to fit in. Um, but you can see just underneath the door, those two little um, sort of locating pins and I think these just sit on those pins there that looks about right one of the final things is the door now these doors you can have um, opening um, but as a minor uh, sort of oversight if we want them opening I should have painted the inside before we'd assembled it which I didn't so um, don't really have much alternative but we're going to glue them closed on this particular one. The hinge would actually work and it would uh, sort of go like that. Uh, but on the next one, I think we will uh, have them opening or at least open, uh, maybe fixed in a position where they're open or something. So we're just going to glue that into place. Putting a bit of glue around the uh, around the door frame, that'll be enough to hold that in place. And then there goes one of the uh, one of the brackets. Let's pop that bracket back on. And most of these parts on this particular kit are quite a nice um, sort of snug and positive fit so um, you know for the for the price of one of these it's not not a, a bad build actually um, definitely have uh, have seen worst but this is uh, this is okay needs a, a little bit of adjusting the um, those um, arms of the brackets they don't um, always fit first time as you see so uh, that particular one that's gone in now and it's just quite a bit of a push but it does go in eventually it's a bit of a fiddle but there we go it will go in in the end and once they're home they're um, they're quite a good fit. There we go, I've got it. Let's repeat that three more times. Done. And then our last piece to fit are the um, the brake wheels, and they fit on either either side. And you see there's a little mark there and it just pops in there and uh, same on the other side so we're going to take the wheels off this give this a coat of primer uh, from the spray can and that's it now finished just notice one of the rails has, uh, has gone slightly askew so I'll, uh, I'll straighten that up before the next video and in the next video we'll be giving this a paint uh, applying the decals and weather so we'll see you next time at Bunton's Yard.